welcome to RCA Radio, a podcast where we cover the latest news and challenges in regulatory, compliance, and quality assurance facing the life science industries. I'm your host, Brandon Miller. In this episode of RCA Radio, we'll be going over a case study where we tried to teach a client that received a warning letter, Life Lessons for Quality Complaint Investigations. Today, I'm joined by Walter Mason, Senior Director of Quality Control and Consulting Services here at RCA. Welcome, Walter. Uh, thank you, Brandon, and uh, welcome to you. <laughs> it's great to have you back so soon. Uh, let's just dive right into this uh, quality complaint project you were a part of. Obviously, we can't share the actual company's name because of our NDAs in place, but can you tell me a little bit more about the company, such as the, where, where they're located, the size, the type of product they produce? Sure, I can do that. Uh, it's it's a large corporation, but as you know, most large corporations have small companies within the corporation or smaller divisions within the corporation. And it happened to be a biologics manufacturer, but they also had some other compounds as well. They had some other NDA and ANDA products that they also manufactured. So, so basically, that's that's the company. So fairly fairly. Di- broad base for this particular location. Okay, okay. So a broad-based biologic company. Uh, What was the challenge that they came to us with, and why did they contact us to help? Well, a couple reasons. One, they were under a warning letter, and they needed help resolving that. And it was a rather significant warning letter. And they, uh, you know, they obviously wanted to get back in operation as quickly as possible. So, yeah, that's... (laughs) That's a good reason, right? (laughs) Yeah, warning letters are a great reason because you only have that 14-day window to respond. What was was your approach to the challenge that they brought to us uh, with this warning letter? What what was the warning letter for? Well, the the warning letter didn't really include complaints, but that was kind of an add-on to this because they had an issue come up while we were there. The main thrust was... You know, to, to help them make sure that every aspect of their manufacturing was done well and appropriately and in compliance. So that was the bulk of the effort. But as you well know, things come up in projects. And this was an issue about a complaint that came in that they, they wanted some advice on, some help with. So that's really how it, how it came about. It was a side issue from the morning letter. What was your approach to the challenge? Well, in this case, you know, the client received a complaint, and the complaint was that the product was subpotent and it didn't work. So they, the, the company did what they should do. They asked for a return sample. And in the meantime, the client tested the retained samples, and all of the tablets that they tested met the release specifications. They even went farther than that. And they tested some of the retained samples of other lots as well. And all of those were found to be within the release specification. When they received the tablet that was returned by the client, they did a visual inspection and then they tested it for potency. Now, as I mentioned earlier, that's not a requirement simply because it's been out of their control and they don't know what's happened to it. However, one of the tablets they tested was found to be out of specification, high, not low. And the complaint was that it was, that it didn't work. Therefore, the assumption was that it was subpotent. However, it wasn't. Now they have a result that they have to deal with. Now, the situation was still manageable at this point, but of course, it's more difficult to manage because they, they now have a number that they need to do something to, you know, by, by testing it and by getting that result, now they have a dilemma. We had discussions with the client about this, and we advised that they, uh, you know, just keep the number, but they felt that they needed to recall the, the product. And we advised against that. There was no requirement for that. And in fact, once the product is out of your control, why you don't know what's happened to it. And as I've mentioned previously, there's been times when clients have adulterated products 
to try to get money out of out of the company. But uh, they did anyway. They recalled the batch, and they notified the FDA that they were recalling that batch. And of course, <laughs> within two weeks after they notified the FDA, the FDA asked them why they hadn't recalled the other batches that were within expiry. Of course, the company was shocked by that, uh, they, but they understood at that point in time they didn't have a choice, and they then recalled all of the batches that were within expiry. What was the what was the timeline that uh, this project um, actually took, and what was what would have been the timeline it would have taken if they would have uh, taken the advice earlier and well, not it, shared that data? It would have been about two months for them to write the protocols, conduct the testing that uh, we outlined for them, and then had had the results. And, and then they could have dealt with that at that point in time. And so how, much, it, how much more work did it create? Um, it's because they did the recall and then they had to go investigate all of their other batches. <laughs> well, that's, uh, obviously they lost some confidence with some of their clients as a result of that because this particular drug is a, is, is a necess but this can literally make the difference between life and death you know oh, wow. in a relatively short period of time so you know when you have a drug like that you don't want to make any mistakes at all and and so they've created an issue for themselves not just the expense of the recall but the loss of customers as a result of that as well, which hurt them more than anything else. The good wow. news, of course, is the resolution was successful. They followed exactly what I wrote down for them, and it worked. So that in the end, it came out fine. It just, it was a learning experience for them. And it's one of those, <laughs> it's one of those lessons that, uh, companies many times have to learn to me it's the difference between reading the book and experiencing something you know a lot of people have read the book and you basically know what to do but where you're in the heat of the battle and 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 you're part of the battle you learn real fast oh yeah <laughs> trial by fire yep <laughs> <laughs> Um, do you have any final thoughts or anything else you'd like to add? Uh, um, it, just just one thing. Uh, I, I mentioned that you know you don't always want to not do something uh, with a return sample. Uh, I had one case. Uh, this happened to be a, a, another script drug that uh, that had a contamination in it, and, and it was an object contamination, and it was returned. And what we did with it was we we did a physical inspection to confirm it there was a foreign object in there it wasn't a chemical contamination at all but we did a micro test on it to to see if this product would hurt the person it happened to be a topical product so you know if if you put it on you know an, an open area would is there a possibility of you getting an infection because of this? And, and of course, the answer for that was no. That's a that's a very different scenario than than the other one. No one was going to die from that one. Number one, <laughs> and uh, number two, it was a single incident, uh, and there wasn't anything there wasn't anything wrong with the product. It, it, this happened to something got into the tube that it was uh, packaged in. So the, the answer, you know, is should I do something when it comes in, if someone returns it, I say, I wouldn't do any physical or chemical testing on it, but I would look at it physically, I, I would observe it and uh, see if I could draw any conclusions from that. But under only unusual circumstances, would I ever do any testing on it. That's a great final thought to end on. Don't don't create more work for yourself than you need. And if you ever have any questions, ask ask an expert, ask somebody that's been in that situation before. Absolutely. Uh, 
I want to thank you for taking the time again uh, to go over this case study and really breaking down how we tried to help this client out quickly and then ended up teaching them a very important life lesson. And I also want to thank our listeners for tuning into this episode of RCA Radio. Be sure to subscribe to be the first to know when we upload the next episode. And thanks again and have a great day.